Tell us, what do you think some of the biggest misconceptions that Joe Average Fisherman or Joe Average Fan uh, has about guys in your line of work? It's a good question. I think for a long time, people probably didn't quite understand the amount of time away from home that we spend, the amount of miles that we have to drive in our truck by ourselves, but you know, we talk about that all the time. Uh, I would say, you know, just uh, people see that, that beautiful wrap boat, that beautiful wrap truck, and, and, and they think, you know, you may have it kind of made financially, but I would say it's just, it's one of the toughest jobs financially to get into that I know of. Um, it's because so much has to go right for you, right. and it has to go right at the right time. You've got to be busting your tail on all avenues, trying to catch fish, trying to do everything right on the business side. Um, but there's still, you know, this, this, this stuff is not free to get to get started. So, so I don't know if you've seen that meme on the internet, don't let my truck and boat fool you, I'm broke. Uh, yeah, that's, exactly. uh, that's a lot of tournament bass fishing right oh, there. Yeah. But you know, the thing is, there are guys that have made a really good living doing it. There are, are guys making a really good uh, living doing it. Um, but I, I really do think it's, it's wise to have a backup plan if you're a young angler and you're wanting to do this, give it everything you've got, but also, you know, be prepared. Be prepared that it doesn't work out for every single person and it, you know, doesn't last forever for a lot of people. Well, that, okay, and back to your, and I agree with 100% on that, as I've had that same conversation with a lot of the guys. Here's another question along those same lines. You say the backup plan. A guy that's gonna go, like, let's say a kid's gonna go fish collegiately, whatever, what degree, what he need, in my opinion, he needs to focus on a business degree, not a fisheries degree or biology or whatever, if you're gonna try to make it in the fishing industry, don't you think? I agree. A, a marketing or a business degree? you want to be a degree? biologist, you know what I mean, 100%. If you're really trying yeah. to give every, you're gonna give everything you've got on the water, but if you can catch fish equally as well as the next guy, and you're fighting for sponsorships with this guy, you know, if you've got that knowledge on the business side and you know how to conduct yourself and um, you've got that part of your game in yep. line, you're gonna you're gonna have the edge for yep. sure. I agree, and I'll throw this out there as well to to people that are up and comers. If you're not good at public speaking and public reading, then go to Toastmasters, go take a public speaking class, go whatever because part of your job. That's great. Yep. Is I've got to be either on camera like he is right here or I've got to <laughs> speak in front of a group or I've got to be on stage at a Bassmaster event holding a $100,000 check and I better have some intelligence to say. It's a great one. Uh, yep. And so I feel like that being good at public speaking is a major part of what makes a really good the guys that I've interviewed and I've interviewed just dang near everybody in the bass world at some point, the guys that are well-spoken and the guys that understand what it takes to get in front of a group and talk um, or do a radio interview or a TV interview are way farther ahead. If, if you get the opportunity, those are great avenues to go practice your public speaking. If you want to do it about fishing, um, call up your local clubs, yep. uh, you know, local sports shows coming to town, the ISC yep. show, something like that. Yep. If, uh, if you've got any credits to your name, you know, and, and and you get you talk to the people that are putting this stuff together people would love to hear you talk and it's great yep. practice i mean i started doing that when i was like 18. so when i turned pro in my early 20s i had five years of doing seminars under my belt i've right. already done 100 seminars right and it's it, it, it's really easy to be nervous about that i was a, a nervous public speaker when it when i was in school and stuff like that when i wasn't talking about fishing because i didn't know about the subject i was talking about and if you're sitting there thinking i'm i'm scared to speak in public i'm nervous about that you may not have ever done a seminar on something that you're truly passionate about you've never stood in front of a camera and talked about something that you're truly passionate about and you know for me it was it's so much easier to get up and do a seminar on fishing right. talking in front of a bunch of sure. people on fishing than is anything else so right. don't let that scare you it's going to be easier than you think right i agree with that and and the whole key to that is you're sharing your knowledge and people are going to be happy to have it or they wouldn't be there. So yeah, that's what they're there for, yeah, 100%. You, this, fishing is an elective, let's put it that way. It's not a core class. That's a great <laughs> so, way to put it. What do you think is the, the biggest negative? Uh, if you could wiggle your nose and change one thing about being a pro, what's the biggest negative part? What was the one thing you'd like to change? Besides dollars. Everyone always yells dollars. And, oh, of course. I just, you know, personally, I wish that I was able to spend a little bit more time with my family, you know? I mean, that's gotcha. it's, it's the most challenging thing, and I think most guys would tell you that if I could just change one thing. You know, it's really fun to be able to travel around and fish and stuff, but 
it is, it's just challenging. You miss um, so many, you miss more birthdays than you make. You right. miss more uh, Mother's Days than you make. You miss more Valentine's than you make. And that's definitely right. a challenge, man, for sure. Okay, I get that. How many days a year do you spend on the road down under your current, under MLF, you're having yeah. eight formats this year, right? Eight tournaments, you know, but it ends up being turns. more like 10 or 12. And then with your sponsor travel and stuff, I'd say, you know, 150 days or so. Now, granted, a lot of people travel. There's no doubt about that. Right. Um, and it's a choice you make. But uh, yeah, I mean, in a perfect world, since that's what you're offering. Right. Uh, yeah, hey, man, I'd, I'd rather what you're asking. Uh, Either have your family right. travel with you or be able to be a pro and be home every night. 100%. So you yep. just need a plane, bro. That's no it. No problem. Yeah, let's go, man. You just need a plane. Okay. Yep. So probably the most common question I get, how do I get sponsors? especially from kids how do I get sponsors like it's this magic thing um, how first of all how'd you get your first couple of sponsors and then second part of that question uh, how much time do you spend dealing with sponsor stuff versus fishing stuff so my first couple of real sponsors like my first couple I'll, I'll call them paying sponsors yeah cash sponsors um, they came differently you know uh, if I and if I look back even up to this point you know some of them you've got You've got to hunt down yourself. Some of them might come to you. There, there's, again, no set way to do it. But the one thing I would say to make yourself appealing to sponsors, the first thing is you need to be able to catch fish. I mean, that comes first. Sure. Skeet Reese told me when I was first starting out, he said, man, if you just catch fish, the rest comes really easy. Right, and if right, you're not right. catching fish, it's really hard. Right. And there's no question it's a direct correlation. The more fish you're catching, the more media exposure you're gonna get, the more attention you're gonna get. So that, that I would say is probably the most important thing to focus on is, is catching fish. Um, secondly though, you gotta just hustle and, and hustle in every way you can. Just like any job that you're, you're trying to get or, or do well at, you've got to look outside the box, always be looking for opportunities to promote your sponsors, to to target new sponsors and um, just take every media opportunity that you can possibly get. You gotta just hustle all the time on, on all fronts. Well, and I wanna point out guys, we make people turn their phones off when we're filming because of potential for RF interference. But every time we stop, he gets on his phone, turns it back on real quick when he has a second and, and you've already returned two sponsor emails that I know of today while we've been in the boat. So I think as with any other business, you have to be diligent with uh, communication, Oh, yeah, and you know that better than anyone. I mean, in, in the TV, in the fishing television business, that's it's, as important, if not more important. It's man. not any, yeah, in my mind, the television game and the TV game are not, or, 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 and the fishing game, you know, pro fishing game like yeah. you're doing, are not fundamentally different. We still answer to the same companies and the, the same things apply. What I would throw out for people that are trying to get their first sponsor is understand it's not about you. It's about what you can do for them. And everyone thinks, oh, I'm gonna go get the sponsor and, and, and they're gonna take good care of me, but how are you gonna take care of them? Everything, every dollar they give you has to correspond back to them in sales, some way, shape, or yeah, form. Yeah, 100%. Uh, brand awareness or sales or something. And a lot of people put it in, well, I caught all these fish, how come you won't sponsor me? Well, because no, either nobody knows or you didn't do it in a way that you could influence people around you to catch fish and, uh, and subsequently sell stuff. So I don't know, that's my thoughts. I, I dig it, I agree. All right, guys, one of the things that makes a pro a pro is catching fish under a variety of conditions. And we have run smack dab into very difficult fishing. So uh, because of that, we're making major changes. We're trying fundamentally different stuff. Uh, every time we make a move, we're trying completely different stuff. So we've done everything from jerkbait fish that are suspended high in the column and catching a few dinks to cranking, deep cranking and catching a few there, including one good one and now we're flipping bushes up here all the way up in a river. So it's a mix up of stuff, but to be a pro at your level, you've gotta be able to do just about anything that basket. There's very few guys that can survive, right? That can only do a handful of things. Yeah, you know, the one trick pony thing is, is all done, you know? It like, used to be able to do that. Yeah, you can't, you know, because it, it, consistency is so rewarded nowadays. If you can only catch them, at one or two tournaments a year, you can't last. You know, you'll, be, you'll get booted off whatever tour you're fishing in. Yeah, yeah, because um, you got to requalify. Absolutely. So you've got to be able to catch them doing a lot of different stuff. If this is one technique flipping that it's it still is one of the top two or three that are very very important to be be able to know how to proficient do, yeah. at for sure. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. 
I'm always happy to have a flipping stick or whatever in my hand, whatever, uh, <laughs> anything like that as a bass guy. I think any real bass guy is. Oh yeah, that's a fun way to catch them and you catch big fish doing it. And you catch big fish doing it. And they never seem to completely learn this one. You know, like that's the, a good point. At Very the end of the point. day, there's always a percentage of them that will fall for this. If you know where there's some fish, you can catch them doing this. I totally agree. So if you are going to do this, you're generally looking for something unique, something a little bit bigger, branch-wise, or... Yeah, when you get into a jungle like this, you, you're definitely looking for irregularities. Right now we're on an outside channel bank, so there's kind of an undercut bank. There's a lot of shade from these trees. Um, and while we're sitting on the outside channel bank, I'm sitting here eyeballing, and the inside of the turn looks really good, too. There's some good bushes and a lot of birds moving through the bushes. So. And that'll be a flatter bank. Yep, we'll fish them both see what happens.